All right, I'm working on this TI simulator here, and I have loaded up, um, used TI Connect to actually take something that I had programmed on the calculator, and we'll go through that in the next week. I think a few of you have finally discovered that it's worthwhile to manage what's on your calculator. Um, again, preparing you for the workforce a little bit. Um, I dare say that there are some times that if you're running to the spreadsheet, people will get a little bit you know, you'll be able to do it. You want to do it on a regular basis, of course, and you have a lot of handheld devices, but there is something still, something very steady about using a calculator and understanding it. All right, so I have loaded up three programs that work in succession, AA, VList, VList 2, and VList 3, and I'm going to go and look through those right now with you. Again, you go to Edit. I'll go to VList first. And you'll notice that when all that does is what I've mentioned and a couple other things makes a list for the radial vectors and the magnitude of the radial vector, the force vector and the magnitude of the force vector, and the moment and the magnitude of the moment, and then sets up your editor so you can put stuff in. That's all that does. That's setting up the editor. Again, if you find that in the stat. I'm going to hit second quit here. Go back to program, edit this time, go to VList 2 and see what that does. VList 2 just forces some zeros into some variables F, R, and M, and then does the cross product for three dimensions. So it takes the, calculates the moment about the x axis, we call that pitch. We call this roll, and we call the third one yaw. And when you're doing a 3D problem, all you get is the yaw, the moment about the z-axis. So it calculates each of those and puts them into the list. In other words, each line on the list corresponds to one vector. So you've got one line in the fx, one line in the fy, one line in the fz, etc., etc. The next step here goes through and calculates the normal or the magnitude of the radial vector, the magnitude of the individual force vectors, and the magnitude of the individual moment vectors. But remember, you're adding vectors here, you so you cannot add up the components to get the magnitude. You've got to use the distance formula. And so what this does here, it just does the takes the distance formula and puts the sum of your moments into m the distance formula and does your sum of the forces into F. And it doesn't do it for the radial vector. I guess it does. It uses R here for the projected vector, not for the forces. And that's, of course, so you can figure out, in fact, so you can figure out an elevation angle. So that R, in this case, is using for the projected vector of the force vector. This next step, it's doing a little error checking. You really want to get used to that. Remember, whether you're doing with matrices or with algebra, what you do to one side of the equality, you do to the other side, but you cannot divide by zero. And so in this case, it's kind of signaling going forward that if you're going to do some divisions by M, F, or R, it's going to send you down to some other place in the program where it skips around it. In this case, it calculates the moment arm taking the sum of the moments divided by the sum of the forces that gets you the moment arm that's a 2d or a 3d concept it gets you the magnet gives you the magnitude of the force and then eventually it gives you the azimuth and the azimuthal angle and the elevation angle for the force it gives you a little error message and stops out so that's the second program that second program is run after you of course fill up your all of your force radial vector pairs and that second program then goes ahead this program here goes ahead and calculates the moments for each of your individual and for the sum I'll finally go to the last program here to show you what it looks like we were edit once again and then we'll go through a quick problem and see what this thing does it's going to sum up the forces in the X the Y and the Z. It's going to sum up and calculate them and it's going to do the same for the moment. Pitch roll and yaw and force it out to the screen. 
That's all it does, second quit. So let's see what this looks like. Well, if you have the program, you basically remember you go into stat. Right here, you notice you're dealing with L1, L2, L3. Perhaps you're doing points, perhaps you're doing 3D vectors. So you wanna go second quit, go to your program and run, set up that vector and set up, sets up the lists and then also sets up your vector, sets up your list so you can edit. So I'm gonna go, let's do that a problem we did in class. 10 in the X is the radial vector for one. 10 in the Y is the radial vector for, in other words, the radial vector for one force is 10 and 10. The force in the X direction was not quite 100, it was something like 99. And the force in the Z direction, hitting an enter here, was in the order of negative 10. I'm sorry, in the Y direction. All right, and again, we did a 3D problem, so that's all you had. Let's go ahead and just on the fact that we kind of remember what was there, let's say that Rex radial vector was at 20. The radial Y was zero. The force in the X direction, again, it was a roller joint. And the force in the Y direction was somewhere in the order of, let's say we guessed at it at 50 positive. I don't think that was the case. Okay, now you have two vectors. What you can do when you're done and calculate all your reactions, you can put in the applied and the reactive forces and hopefully get zeros out of this thing as your check. I'm gonna hit second quit. Now I can run the second program. We, of course, the first one we've already done, it will not screw up, it just redefines. Go to the list two. And if you notice there, it gives you a sum because in fact, this force in fact does have a moment arm because it has an X component as well. Hit an enter there. Gives you something about that. That's really not what we're interested in. You hit clear here. Enter. Hit the clear at the end. Now do you go to your second program here. And the second one here should do your calculation. Of course we didn't check the mode. But it looks pretty much the sum of the forces in the X and the sum of the forces in the Y look about correct. The forces are equal to that. The moment is equal to that. We'll see whether that indeed is correct. And you can hit clear here. So that's how the program works. Of course, you always go through and give it one or two questions that you know the answer to. Let's check how that mode worked out. Well, it was set to degrees, so that wasn't off. So let's go ahead and do one more. Let's go back to our stat here and edit. And this time, we'll just put it up at 10, 10. We know that is going to be an f of x is 0, and we're just going to make it minus 10. And we know that this one is going to be a positive 5 to react back to it. It's twice as far away, so it's got twice the moment arm. So basically, these should add all up to a moment of 0, and the force should still be a negative 10. In the end, we can come back here and change that, but we're going to go ahead now, second quit, go to program, recalc. You have to remember to recalculate. Okay, it tells me there's an error in one of them, but it basically should be okay. Program, the error is just because it cannot calculate the moment arm. Goes here, this looks correct. The sum of the forces is in the x is zero, sum of the forces in the y is minus five, and there's the sum of the forces in the z. I can hit clear here. We can go and put the rest of that answer that we know, we can edit, and we realize that a radial vector is zero, zero, there would have to be a reaction force in the Y of 5 as well. And so in this case, we have input all of our forces, the applied and the reactive. We've given it the moments, and you can realize later, if you go ahead and do your mathematics on here, it will make no difference. The sum of the moments has to be equal to 0. Second quit. Program. Tend to run one after the other. program. I give you this program not so you can run a program, but you can see more or less how efficient it is to do if you're going to be doing some of these calculations again and again to make a very simple program making use of lists. So um, that will be available for you on Monday. 
Uh, I will post out the code if I can and get it off of here again showing you that TI Connectus was programmed on my calculator and brought to the computer. Thanks for listening. Would be very useful if you're doing an exam pulling data off of a spreadsheet or off of a computer screen. Even more useful if you're pulling things off with the scale.